everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got some exciting new kits to share and review with you guys today, and actually from a brand new company. This is a company called Gecko Models. They're out of China, and I, they've been around for a few months now. In fact, I've noticed them on one of the sites in Europe for a little bit of time, but I've been trying my hardest to get them over here in the United States and have finally succeeded. So what I thought I would do is take one of them apart and show you all the different ins and outs of these brand new kits from this company and talk about kind of what our feelings are on it. First of all, they have picked uh, three British cruiser tanks and all three of these tanks are based on the same chassis. So 95% of all the kit inside each one of them is the same. There's just little variations on each one of them. What I did before I started filming here too is I wasn't too familiar of the Mark 10 or excuse me, the A10 Mark II cruiser tank and I looked up a little bit on some of the history. I guess in total the British made 175 of these and these were developed in the 1930s as they had two types of tanks they were working on. They had the cruiser tanks and the infantry tanks. The cruiser tanks were low armor very or fast fast for a tank of that size. And then they had the big infantry tanks which were really really slow but ridiculously thick armor. So what they thought they would do was kind of like put the two together when they came up with this and they added a little bit of armor not as much as the infantry tank and but more so the unfortunate part was the tank was still really slow and the armor stunk on it. So it was kind of kind of a failure overall. Like I said, they made 175 of them. 30 of them, or 32 of them, I believe, were sent to France to fight the Germans. And that's why you'd have these. From what I read on there, too, they didn't do very well there. So the Germans captured some of them. So that's why we have this particular version. We have the regular Mark, uh, let's see, this one is the Mark 1A, and then the Mark 1. This one had a... Uh, a two pounder inside of it and then you have the CS. The CS stood for close support and that one had a howitzer inside of it. And even that I was reading on seemed a little in interesting. Most of the rounds that they carried inside the CS one were smoke rounds. They had 40 smoke rounds in there and only a couple of high explosive rounds because its primary function was that if an army was retreating they would lay down smoke so they could get away safer and had very few high explosive rounds for taking out any type of you know of towed vehicles or anything like that so that's a little bit of a curious story one other quick thing too I always thought was kind of funny I'm looking at the box art right here and you've got this giant fuel tank in the uh, the front of the vehicle which I don't know about you but if I'm going into combat I don't really want to have a fuel tank mounted on the front of my vehicle and you do have the option of putting it on all three of these versions right here so if you decide you want to do that it seems a little little odd for it so hey uh, excited to take a look inside in these I briefly looked inside a few minutes ago and they look to be some pretty nice looking kits and uh, well I'll show them to you right now so let's get started Okay, the kit we're going to take a look inside is the uh, Cruiser Tank A-10 Mark I, the captured German one. And I just wanted to point out to you guys, I read thoroughly through the instructions, this has all of the parts to make the British version as well. It has the decals inside of it, everything, it's just they have the... Uh, German version on the cover so not to worry about that first of all the box is pretty good size and there is a lot of plastic inside this kit so let's take a look and in inside okay we're gonna first take a look at the uh, the main part of the hull and part of the turret it's kind of all broken up here uh, first thing I'm gonna point out to you guys is throughout this entire kit there is a lot of slide molding in fact most of the sprues have some type of slide molding done on it and if you guys aren't familiar what slide molding is slide molding means there's not just a, a top and bottom of the mold there's a top and bottom and then there's a side unit that comes out so you can get detail on more than one surface or top and bottom surface so like right in through this area for the lower part of the hull the, these bolts right here would not be able to be duplicated. They have to be molded as a separate piece if it wasn't for the slide that went in there and then molded those. And I'll basically just kind of go over each one of them right here to let you see. So like I said, it's not a bathtub style hull. It's a multi-piece hull, which the lower part of the hull is here. And then you've got parts of the turret here. Those are those gas tanks we were talking about. And you can see it's been slide molded right there as well. 
and some of the louvers, things like that on it. Then we have the other big sprue in the kit, which is the upper part of the hull with all of our rivet detail. And once again, the side detailing. So your entire fender, which is kind of cool the way they've done this, the entire fender is molded as one piece. So you're not putting sides or multiple facets together. So it's all done, ready to go. Here is the side of our hull, both sides right there. And you're going to notice as we get further into this too, the slide molding comes up in a lot of other ways too. So you've got um, some of our suspension pieces here, like the drive sprocket. And this is turned, but you can see that these little vents right here were slide molded as well as this ring. Now, this ring could have been printed the other way, but then you wouldn't get any of the side grooves on it as well. So it's nice. you got extra detail all the way around. And you get two of those inside the kit. And this is a, another thing that is actually really cool on it, and it's this little spring for part of the suspension. So you can see it's been slide molded, so a big long rod goes down the middle there in the connection point. And once you cut that off, this spring would actually technically work and looks like a real spring. Sometimes you get the springs and they're, you know, they've got a, like a groove down that's holding the whole thing together. But this is a true spring, so a little added detail in the kit. And the one other thing that's always cool that if you can do is slide molding into the barrel. So here's our two pounder, which is about a 40 millimeter gun. And it also has been slide molded as well as whatever these little things are here. I don't know, if, those might be the ammunition. Not quite sure what that is right there. Might be ammunition in a rack. It's kind of hard to tell. And then we've got some of the other parts here to let you guys see. This is your mantlet some of the uh, protective armor that goes around the uh, the mantlet. Also includes a figure with multiple heads. I'll let you take a look at that right there. And some more parts here too. These two have been all slide molded on the side here. So these bends are all molded as op or as one piece rather than multiple pieces. And you got your radio and a little wood grain on this part. So it looks to be a, a pretty nice looking little kit. Now we're going to get to the tracks. And these kind of scared me a little bit uh, only because of the amount of parts you have to cut off on the tracks. Now as you can see, you've got these little links right here. So you've got a top and a bottom. And then you'll be able to put this link in between it there to get the tracks to go around and... This is your tracks right here. So there is a lot, a lot of work involved on those tracks, but it's a very specific type track. And, uh, but you just have just quite a bit of time just cutting them off the sprue itself. And then we've got some more parts here. And keep in mind too, at the end of the video or at the end of when I'm, when I'm done talking here, I'll have a breakdown of each one of the sprues to let you guys see all the parts that if I'm moving kind of fast or something on that. And then there's a whole bunch of wheel sprues where they've molded the inside hub separately. So you get some nice detail on those. And grab the photo etch here. There is photo etch in the kit. So we've got the uh, screens for the back here, some other armor plates, and a bunch of other little parts. In fact, I looked up this part. This is like a uh, armor cover or a metal cover for the radios to keep things from getting bounced into that. There is a big set of decals, and big in the sense that you get five different options. And the fifth option, like I was telling you earlier, is for the German captured vehicle. The other four versions are for a British one. So don't let the box art fool you that if you're looking to do that early one, all the markings are inside there. And the kit also comes with a little bit of rope and wire inside of it as well. So there it is. There is a breakdown of the parts inside the kit. The, uh, the company Gecko also makes a couple of British infantry sets in North Africa. Now, I wasn't able to get a hold of any of those. And in fact, uh, the majority of these vehicles in World War II were used in North Africa. The very first, like I was saying, 30 to 32 of them fought in France, but then all of them were shipped to North Africa to fight down there. So that's why they have the figures that go along with it. The retail is $59 in the United States, so not a bad value for the amount of plastic you get in it. And 
looks like they're off to a pretty good start, uh, especially with all the slide molding. I know that always makes things go together a lot easier. So that's it. I want to thank you guys as always for watching, and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.